<laughs> well, hello and welcome back to the Shallow Proclamation. My name is Thomas, and I'm joined by Paul. And we're watching our first Doctor Who movie. This is yeah. amazing, Paul. What is this? Well, so this is Doctor Who and the Daleks. It's released in 1965 on the 25th of June. It's the 20th biggest British box office money maker in 1965 in the UK. Didn't do so well yet in uh, America. Written by Milton Sabotsky. Um, however, it's an adaption of the first Dalek story that we watched with William Hartnell um, back in season one. Uh, directed by Gordon Fleming. Produced by a company called Amicus. They bought an option to make the story in two sequels from Terry Nation and the BBC for £500. Uh, mostly filmed in England at Shepperton Studios and took six weeks to produce. Um, and it was made on a budget of £180,000, which is about three million, three and a half million roughly in 2020. I mean, I've seen this a long time ago. Um, I bought this in a double video, double feature on VHS as a, as a kid. Um, this, the two Peter Cushing films. I don't remember much about it, apart from it obviously is the basic story of the, the Daleks. Um, yeah, I mean, what are your thoughts going into this? Literally zero knowledge. I, I didn't know it existed until we started doing this experiment. I thought the Paul McGann movie was the only Doctor yeah. Who movie. So, yeah, very excited. Yeah, I remember this intro as a child and just being like, well, it, this isn't Doctor Who. Yeah, it's very different to the TV, isn't it? This is a bit more sort of cabaret. Yeah, <laughs> it's... Kind of... Yeah, I mean... Da, 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 da. <laughs> if it doesn't have the, the music, is it really Doctor Who? <laughs> I don't know. And also, this isn't really a, a vortex, is it? It's kind of... A disco. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is this Susan? That is Susan. Barbara? Yep. Her new boyfriend. Oh, yes, I look forward to meeting him. What's his name? Ian. Wow, so they're, they're playing on the romance thing in the, more in the movie than they ever yeah, did throughout very two much. seasons. They're for Barbara, the soft centres, her favourite kind. Oh, yes, of course. Yes, yes. Well, she, she was here a moment ago. Well, uh, never mind. And don't you sit down while you're waiting for her. Oh. <laughs> Soft centres. Uh, my name's Ian, Doctor Who. Oh, no! How, how do you do? Yes. You called him Doctor Who. I can't bear that. <laughs> As if his name was like, he was Mr. Who and then he got his PhD. Yeah. Became Doctor Who. This is TARDIS. TARDIS, not the TARDIS. I'm intrigued by what the design's going to be of this one. Ooh, that is horrible. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> the door opens outwards. I like the moustache. I bet you do. It's like a school science fairs. Oh, Barbara is feeling a bit frisky and uh-oh, they've been whisked off somewhere. They've really kind of sexed it up for the big screen, <laughs> haven't they? So this is Scaro. I mean, it looks can... stunning in colour, doesn't it? I was going to say, they've definitely got a slightly bigger budget for their set. Yeah. You know, and we were very impressed with the sets, weren't we? I don't yeah. know if we mentioned that before, but... The, the what, sorry? <laughs> Ian's character, he's... He's a bit more of an oaf, isn't he, in this? Right, yeah. <laughs> it was another soft centre. <laughs> I'm loving this. This is kind of Doctor Who parody, isn't it? <laughs> uh, uh, Doctor Who. Yeah, that is annoying me, actually, that they're calling him Doctor Who. Oh, yeah. It's one yeah. of the first things you have to correct people on when you introduce them to the show. They're like, so why is he called Doctor Who? It's like, yeah. no, he, he's not called that. The show's called Doctor Who. <laughs> yeah, it really gra it grates on me so much. <laughs> if you're a block of parmesan you will be <laughs> nothing but shards by the end of this you, you can see that the money for the sets was not spent on the tardis can't you really yeah i mean it's rubbish isn't it <laughs> it's awful it's a horrible tardis 
because it's got so much yeah. stuff in there, but it doesn't really have a coherent idea. Peter Cush's Doctor seems more okay. like just like a doddery old man to me. Right. Whereas Hartnell is much more commanding. He, well, he certainly becomes more commanding. At the beginning, he was just a grumpy old git, wasn't he? <laughs> 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 That's quite a good gag, actually. <laughs> what I'd do is, yeah, sit down and then, like, throw something <laughs> to get caught in it. I'm going to be intrigued by what the Daleks look like in this as well. Yeah, they got legs. <laughs> no. <laughs> Yeah, I really like the design of this, actually. It's kind of like how people in the 60s imagined the future. <laughs> sure, yeah. There is nothing wrong with the fluid link. I just didn't want to leave until we had explored the city. Please forgive me. Is everything all right with your fluid link, Paul? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I like them, actually. The red one. So what do you think of the idea that Barbara is also his granddaughter in this? Hang on. I missed that. What the heck? So... so she was just living at his house with him, you know, and he had to come round to take her out. What are your thoughts on the Dalek design here? I think I like everything apart from the bumper. It does make them look like dodgems, doesn't it? Sure, yeah. I was just going to say, I can see the Daleks' lights flashing there. Apparently they didn't realise that the Dalek lights on the dome only flash when they talk. So, ah. they're just randomly flashing. I wonder if the people working on this film were were themselves fans. Because that can be a, a blessing and a curse for film adaptations. If someone has no reverence for the source material, then they might just sort of do whatever they want with it and people get disappointed. But equally, if they're like a massive fanboy, it Whitaker. can be a little bit kind of... <laughs> <laughs> Don't get us cancelled, Paul. <laughs> Sorry. Do you like my vanishing bottle? <laughs> it's almost giving me Christmassy vibes. Did this come out at Christmas? Uh... No, I think I said June or July. Oh, right, sorry. So, I think it was summer, you know, kind of summertime. 25th of June, so... <laughs> so basically as far Basically away as far from Christmas, Christmas as you can be. <laughs> Did you say 25th of June? 25th, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's taunting me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> David Bowie. <laughs> I was just about to say. Oh, lava lamps. <laughs> yeah. See the Daleks in the background, their lights just flashing randomly. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Like they're emergency vehicles. Yeah. This Dalek is reversing. <laughs> Caution. Driver turning left. <laughs> I wonder what meal a Dalek could prepare. Lentil Dal. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, weren't they called the Dals before they were called Daleks? Yep. <laughs> mm. That looks tasty. Yeah, was that a bit of moose? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Barbara's yes. dirty protest there. That's <laughs> what happens when they put people in prison, isn't it? Like... <laughs> Paul. <laughs> That's so great. <laughs> the sound effects. <laughs> oh, there it is. I knew we had to see the mutant. Because otherwise there would have been nothing in there. That's pretty weird, isn't it? Yeah. It's a webbed, clawed, reptilian type hand. <laughs> that motion it did there. <laughs> Can you get me out of this thing? It's hot in here. It's getting hot in here. <laughs> so take off all your domes. <laughs> <laughs> 
am getting so hot, I want to take my dome off. <laughs> why, why on earth in a city like this would there ever be a lip like that that would cause problems? <laughs> So apparently they originally weren't going to have the Daleks. They couldn't afford kind of lasers or anything like that. They were going to have fire, but they thought it would be too horrific for them to shoot fire. Um, so they ended up with the fire extinguishers. That's a trap. Oh, I see what you mean. So the guns are just fire extinguishers. Yeah, yeah. Reminds me a bit of uh, Suspiria or something. Kind of Dario Argento, sort of giallo cinema. These are all words I don't, and you don't know, Thomas. <laughs> 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 so it was like in the script it just said laugh woman laughs <laughs> at this point you might want to express some form of mirth <laughs> <laughs> yeah this score is great actually mm. oh, oh I like that moon that yeah, that's a stunning backdrop, actually. Nice kind of matte painting thing again, I guess. I mean, matte painting was the 11th Doctor, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I think you made that joke last time. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't resist. <laughs> oh, crumbs. It's like Dalek upskirting. Yeah. I mean, I've talked in the series about shooting the Daleks from a low angle, but this is a bit much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean... Feels like that Dalek was objectified. <laughs> All we can do is follow the pipes. Oh, Danny boy. <laughs> the pipes, the pipes are calling. <clears throat> Bit of a pipe dream, this, isn't it? <laughs> All right, pipe down, mate. <laughs> do you reckon those torches are <laughs> piping hot? <laughs> All we need now is a cameo from uh, Billy Piper. <laughs> so there is some, I can't remember where it's written. Uh, it must be in, must be in some extended Doctor Who media that um, the Doctor makes some reference to these films where he says like people had even made films about him. Um, ah. So if you want to try and fit these films into Doctor Who canon somewhere, these are the films that people have made having heard about the Doctor somehow, you know. Oh. Oh. Crumbs. Is that guy alright? I don't know, he just fell down and there's... Yeah. 99! 98! Uh, for, uh, uh, minutes, um... What ice cream would you like, sir? Flake. 99. <laughs> Mr. Whippy. <laughs> yeah, that black one's my favourite, I think. I think I like the red one. Ooh. <laughs> that was nicely done. That was pretty cool. Well played, Ian. Goodbye. 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 Bye-bye now. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye now. Goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs> you came into this with no expectations. Mm. Where, where, where? Yeah, what do you think of after you've seen this now? Well, I think it was a cushing disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. No, all right. Lo loads of positives. It right. looks brilliant. Apart from the TARDIS. Love it. Love yep. the design of the Daleks. Love the whole design of Scaro, the buildings, the petrified forests, the painted backdrops. Um, yeah, I, it's a minor gripe about the Dalek um, skirting. I think it's a little bit too pronounced, but hey, you don't see it for a lot of the shots. They look great. 
It's mainly about the Daleks. Um, as for, <laughs> but you're buffering. <laughs> I mean, yeah, uh, you don't really come away from it feeling like you care massively about the central characters, do you? No, no. So I only care about them because the series has got me invested in the Doctor and Barbara and Ian and Susan. Mm. If if I was coming into this cold, I don't think I'd come away with it thinking, I want to see more adventures with these four. I don't think even that helps you, to be honest, like, because, like, having the investment in the series. I mean, I think for me, like, as a kid, obviously I bought this video at some point, I had my pocket money and saved up something, and I had... To, you're in the shop and you've got all these different Doctor Who stories on tape there. Yeah. And you've got this as well in, you know, with the second film included on it. And at some point you buy it. I must have bought this. I do remember this kind of feeling after like watching it of being like, this isn't Doctor Who, you know, like hmm. I've wasted my money on something, you know, because like it's, it has no, without the Doctor Who theme music, you like it doesn't have that and then they're calling it TARDIS rather than the TARDIS he's called Doctor Who he's just an old guy who invented a time machine in his back garden which looks appalling inside mm. Ian and Ian's a completely different character Barbara and Susan are both his granddaughters and Susan's really young and yeah he's this kind of doddery old man um there's just so many things about it where you keep going, you go, you look at it and you think, oh, it's not, it's not really Doctor Who though, is it? It's not really Doctor Who. Um, so yeah. yeah, it looks, like you say, it looks good, you know, as you watch it, it's it's an impressive production, but it doesn't have any of the kind of, the charm of the warmth of the characters or the, the series, I don't think. Um, well, and it's weirdly pantomime, isn't it? Like Ian is a total prat. Oh, and that ending, I'd forgotten about that. I mean, I, when he opened the doors and he saw the Romans marching towards him, I remembered, I was thought, as I saw it, I went, oh yeah, I do remember that now, but I hadn't remembered his kind of reaction where he just goes bonkers. And like... <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm very glad to have seen it. It feels like a definite of its time Dalek mania, you know, and... Mm. I enjoyed it, you know. It, it. I wasn't bored for a. Uh, it, uh, you know, it, it. It didn't drag. I don't think. Mm. But, as you say, I, I yeah. Quite why it. <laughs> why does it exist? Why it exists is a mystery. It's, I mean, it's a cash cow. Obviously, you know, Terry Nation wanted to get the Daleks. I know he wanted to, you know, try and get a series off the ground at some point with just the Daleks. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a strange thing as well, because you feel like you've... Because also, not only is it a strange sort of parody that's not quite Doctor Who, obviously yeah. it's a story that we've seen as well. You know, we we know what's going to happen. And even the even the first Dalek story, to me, is not the most gripping of adventures. Mm. Um, you know, so in movie form, it's, it's punchier, that's for sure. Much It is much quicker and better paced than the uh, the tv version um, yeah and it looks better in the sense of the way it's shot of course you know the the outside of the tardis looks great and yeah. all the the forbidden for not the forbidden forest that's harry potter <laughs> <laughs> the petrified forest um you know the lighting in that and the just the scale of the size of those sets and the the rock face going up into the the dalek city it's brilliant you know and, and as you said the city itself inside is um got this wonderful sort of 60s kind of feel to it in terms of its design that futuristic 60s look um and the daleks look great but it lack it just lacks something as a whole um yeah the, you know and i don't think cushing can hold a candle to hartnell um yeah, which at all. I was surprised by because it, he was a great actor, obviously. Um, mm. And you think how imposing he was in Star Wars, even though he had, 
you know, maybe a few minutes of screen time overall. Um, and that when they brought him back in Rogue One and kind of recreated him, everyone got really excited, even though, because we kind of all knew who this character was, even though he had quite a small part in in the original. He absolutely owned it. It was a great mm. screen presence. And the fact that he played Sherlock Holmes and stuff um, in movies um, from that time. So I was kind of expecting him to be, to to do a, quite an imposing doctor um but it it was it was a bit of a yeah a bit of a kind of mad scientist doddering just quite <laughs> slightly pathetic uh, yeah character wasn't it? which probably wasn't yeah which i'm sure wasn't him it was you know how he was told to play it but um mm. yeah the characterization's yeah. all off isn't it and of course you don't get any of the we've said ian ian is kind of the the oaf the, the kind of pratt figure in this version whereas in the series ian is very much kind of got that can-do attitude you know he was the kind of hero figure in many ways even above the doctor at that stage um because the doctor was kind of a bit of an anti-hero wasn't he and mm. we weren't sure about him to begin with um and barbara was always kind of incredibly capable as well um just you know a really strong character but in this she doesn't really do anything in this to be honest nothing yeah. distinctive at all um so yeah it's it doesn't have any of that um it's kind of yeah. like they just yeah they took a doctor who story and you know redid it but it it yeah it's not to my mind it's not really doctor who but yeah well interesting um well i'm glad we watched it so there's another one of these right <laughs> they, they made there is one. another one and in my mind though this is, so the second one is based on the dalek invasion of earth um it's called Dalek Invasion Earth 2150 AD, I think. Um, and I would say it's a stronger film, personally, in my mind. Well, thanks for watching, everyone. Um, hope you've enjoyed this as much as we have. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it gave <laughs> us a Hopefully you've enjoyed it more. It? Like, and then <laughs> that'd be even better for you. Like. <laughs> um, but uh, we'll be back soon. Yeah. Yeah. Let us Good know point. what you thought of it down below. Give us a like and subscribe. And join us soon for um, a few more little extra bits and then Series 3. Until then, take care and goodbye. Mm -hmm.